It's Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl with help from my friends at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts. Thank you very much. This is a first year Edsel. Don't call it a Ford Edsel. It's actually an Edsel division vehicle. You gotta remember, 1957, or sorry, 58, 59, and 60, Ford had the Edsel division. The whole idea Idea was to have a car beyond the Ford and the Mercury and the Lincoln to take on General Motors, Chevy, Pontiac, Olds, Buick, Cadillac, basically to diversify and allow more shoppers to cross shop Ford products than going over GM. So here's the thing, 58 was the first year for the Edsel. Very interesting styling, especially up front, we'll get to that. But here at the back, one year only for these crazy plastic taillight lenses, which have this sweep effect to them, and basically um, concave rear. Now here's the thing, Edsels were sold on two platforms, the Junior Series, which were the Pacer and the Ranger, and the Seniors, which were the Corsair and the Citation. So those four levels, theoretically, could go head to head with anything from Buick, Olds, or Pontiac. And of course, Chevrolet was considered the, where Ford would fight it out. But this is not a Ford, it's an Edsel. They actually had their own motor division with a whole management structure, the whole deal. Uh, it didn't go very well, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, notice how everything about this subliminally has the word E for Edsel. There's all kinds of E's hidden on plain sight on these things, Easter eggs, if you will. Who and what is Edsel? Well, Henry Ford's son, Edsel. A gas filler located here behind the license plate frame. Um, you know, artfully done, I suppose. A little cover here for the trunk latch. There we go, right there, spring-loaded, still works. Uh, little details that sort of theoretically made the Edsel more appealing. Now, this one here is an Edsel Ranger, the bottom of the line. The price on this thing new was about $30 more than a Ford Fairlane six-cylinder car. So, you know, you got a little bit more, but again, this is the basic Edsel. Uh, here at the back, well, this is quite the thing here. This is Motor Trend right here, October 57. And Motor Trend rarely makes mistakes, with one exception. Canceling road kills, junkyard gold. Canceled? What do you mean we're canceled? But aside from that, this is a great cover with showing the Edsel's body on frame construction. And we have the dual exhaust, uh, the frame, the Coke bottle perimeter type frame, body goes on top. Here's the big V8 engine, standard V8. You couldn't get a six banger in an Edsel in 1958. Uh, and again, the front, the styling, that thing right there, that's the controversy. A lot of people thought it looked like an Oldsmobile sucking a lemon, a horse collar, or certain Freudian things. I'll leave it up to your imagination on that one. But again, the Edsel was meant to compete with uh, GM's many cars. Now here we have here, how good is the Edsel? And it says here on the left, it's Ford's biggest gamble performer. How does it ride? It's new, but how different? And we see here in red, fanfare has preceded this new car, and some are now saying that they're in over their heads, that the Edsel hasn't a chance against the target area occupied by Dodge, the Soto, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, and some Buicks. Other closer observers are of the opinion that FOMO Co., Ford Motor Company, is even competing against their own Ford and Mercury cars. You know, it could well be. Again, these were not very successful. Here's uh, some pictures of the engines, and uh, we'll get into that in a second, but uh, they only had big block engines, 361 cubic inches through 430 or 410 cubic inches. And again, meanwhile, Ford did not have a big block. Uh, well, they had a 332 and 58, but largely they had Y blocks. You could not get a 292 or a 312 or a six, oh, six an Edsel. But this is again, the Ranger, the base car. So we look inside and it has rubber floor mats. Yep, you paid extra for the upscale Pacer or Corsair or Citation, which then would have had carpeting, but on the ashtray there, we'll even see the E, the Edsel logo on the back of that. So little subliminal things to remind everybody, including the back seat passengers that were riding in an Edsel. Now we'll have a peek, and Shane, if you can look at the steering wheel. Uh, that is 1958, kind of a new thing. The center of the steering wheel, those buttons, that's the Teletouch automatic transmission, $231.40 extra, although it was standard on Corsair, the upscale car. But those buttons right there activated an electric servo motor under the floorboards, which then shifted the automatic transmission. So again, $231.40 to bring your Edsel into the space age with push button controls. The speedometer was unique to Edsel, sort of a rotating uh, speedo in a ball, maybe come around to the front, don't know. But again, this is the Pacer, the base version. Again, above this would have been the, uh, sorry, this is the Ranger. The Pacer, Corsair, and Citation would be the big brothers to this one here. And we have here the, uh, the Edsel logo on the dash. And let's open up the Glubby and see what we got. Sometimes surprises await. 
Okay, no wraps, unfortunately, just some flasher units here. Notice how for the drive-in movies where you might have seen Plan 9 from Outer Space or maybe Rebel Without a Cause, you put your soda pop right here, watch the drive-in movie, which of course was a big part of America in the time this car was new. Notice how the, the brake pedal even has the E on it for Edsel. The radio is an AM radio. Um, and uh, the two red dots on that, those are for uh, where to tune in in the event of a nuclear emergency. <laughs> those are the, the air raid siren things, Armageddon stuff. But the dash on this is pretty advanced. But again, this is the base car. Uh, this, is, of course, is the Ranger Pacer Corsair and Citation. We're above this one. More on that in a second. Now we'll close the doors. Oh, and this one is a four-door sedan with a fixed B-pillar right there. And again, the Ranger, the, the bottom car, was... Uh, not available as a hard top. It was pretty austere, but you could work your way up to a convertible uh, in the uh, Citation lineup. Now, one thing about 1958 Edsel and 58 only is how the hood opened with the hinge at the front. Right here we see, you lift the hood, and that was 58 only. Again, it was a tribute to the 55 through 7 Thunderbird, kind of sporty. Lincoln Continental kept this, but for 59, this would go to a more conventional front hinged hood. Now, the big deal on Edsel under the hood was it again, no six cylinder engines, no 292 or 312 Y blocks. These are strictly big blocks. In this one here, we see the E400 stamped into the valve cover right there. That means 400 foot pounds out of this 361 cubic inch FE big block with 303 horsepower. Dual exhaust was $23.45 extra, but there's a four barrel Holly under this. And again, 1958, strictly four barrel, strictly big block. The big dog would have been the 410 cubic inch engine, which was optional in all Edsels, but standard on the bigger ones. But the big problem or controversy with Edsel was up front, okay? They had quad headlights, as you'd expect on any self-respecting 58 passenger car out of Detroit, but that grill uh, with that bizarre heavy chrome center and split bumper, kind of an interesting effect, almost like an old Packard. Uh, I think that might have been the intent, but uh, the trouble was Oldsmobile had a similar hoop grill, and some said that the uh, Edsel looked like an Oldsmobile that had just swallowed a lemon, which means it was puckering from, from sourness and controversial cars. And downside, too, is under the skin, it was basically a Ford Fairlane sedan. Again, that would be the story here. Now, Motor Life magazine did do a nice feature on the new Edsels and Edsel cross-country test right there. And they had a lot to say about the Edsel. And here we have this one here is a uh, top model. I believe it's a Corsair. And on the top right, it says here, look, Ma, a new Edsel was the phrase frequently heard during Motor Life's 2,800 mile Michigan and California test of an Edsel Pacer. Okay, a Pacer two-door hardtop. This wasn't surprising since the test started almost a week before Edsels were formally introduced to the public. So the green and white test car was the first of its kind seen in the towns and cities through which it passed. Now here we have here, uh, one of the most interesting aspects of the cross-country test was listening to reactions of spectators to the Edsel. In general, they're at least 85% favorable. The finless rear end treatment proved amazingly popular. In fact, there was not a single adverse comment about this phase of Edsel styling. Reaction to the vertical grill was a bit more mixed, probably because it has been so long since any U.S. car uh, has appeared with one. Favorable remarks ran about three to one ahead of the thumbs down reaction, however. Now, on the next page, we get into the various uh, structures or levels of Edsel. Yeah, maybe we don't. Well, anyway, but this is basically the idea that the Edsel was a big deal. Magazines were jumping up and down to get the first scoop on Edsel. But as we know, sales of these things are supposed to be 200,000 units in 1958, but only 63,110 ended up selling. A huge bummer. And by the end of 1958, Ford knew they had a lemon on their hands, not just an old grill sucking a lemon, and they backtracked big time. For 59, the car was decontented. By 60, the thing was canceled. And you could actually get a six-cylinder engine in an Edsel in 1959, which was the opposite of what they had in mind. So I think in the end, what happened was Ford outthought itself, and the Edsel ended up, people who might have bought a Mercury, bought an Edsel instead. They didn't go uh, away from Pontiac or Olds or Buick or Dodge or DeSoto. They actually bought the Edsel instead of a Mercury. So it kind of backfired. But it sometimes goes to show that overthinking things can backfire. And the Edsel is a classic example. In fact, business schools have entire courses uh, on the failure of the Edsel and how things went wrong despite so much planning on the part of, of a Ford Motor Company in the years building up to the Edsel's launch. So if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steam Mag's YouTube channel. Ring the bell so you know when new videos are coming out. That's every single day, and we'll see you tomorrow here on the Junkyard Crawl.